Welcome back to Blackadder's Most Cunning Moments, a compendium of comedy moments from history's favourite sitcom. Our next moment is equal 39th, the first of several ties. But where would Blackadder be without his trusty sidekick, Baldrick? A lot better off, probably. But there'd be a lot fewer laughs. I think there's something particularly British about him. You know, British love an underdog. Well, I was wondering if I might have the afternoon off. <laughs> you can have the afternoon off when you die, not before. <laughs> My own personal market research leads me to believe that Baldrick is the... is the hero. I have a cunning plan. It wasn't until the second series, when Ben Elton joined the writing team, that he had this idea, why don't we turn Baldrick into the stupidest, most brain-dead creature that has existed in the whole course of human history. There's a scene where he comes in with a mousetrap on his head, and it's pure Tom and Jerry. It could be Tom with Jerry, trying to catch Jerry with a piece of cheese hanging on in front of his mouth and some contraption on his head. Why have you got a piece of cheese tied to the end of your nose? <laughs> to catch my smile all day. I lie on the floor with my mouth open and hope they scurry in. <laughs> Do they? Not yet, my lord. I'm not surprised. Your breath comes straight from Satan's bottom, boy. I think it's, it's, it's funniest, but I also think, you know, that he was, you know, a hero in many respects because he, you know, he represented the, the working classes, literally. Sharing the dubious honour of being equal to Baldrick is everyone's favourite pie maker, the lovelorn Mrs. Miggins. No more sad little London for you, Baldus. From now on, you will stand out in life as an individual. Will I? Well, of course you will. All the other slaves will be black. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Blackadder, oh, what's all this I hear about you? Buying a bathing costume in 40 gallons of coconut oil. Are you going abroad? Yes, I'm off. Oh, sir, what a tragic end to all my dreams. And I'd always hope that you'd settle down and marry me and that together we might await the sliver of tiny adders. Actually, it took me by surprise that Mrs. Miggins, uh, you know, carried a candle for uh, Blackadder. Mrs. Oh. M, if we were the last three humans on Earth, I'd be trying to start a family with Baldrick. <laughs> But I just love the uh, despair and the tortured agony. I still receive tons of fan mail uh, for Mrs. Miggins, um, and it just constantly amazes me uh, the fan base that's out there. So much so that I think I'm going to have to start thinking about opening a, a, a cake or pie shop in the not so distant future. <laughs> Jokes on Blackadder in this Series 2 moment featuring his crafty arch-rival for the royal affection. It's none other than Queenie's fawning favourite, Lord Melchit, played with consummate sliminess by Stephen Fry. Majesty. <laughs> Surely not. You utter creep. Melchit is tolerated. He's not very exciting. He's sort of like a grand vizier without the wisdom, really. He's a sort of um, uncle. Bye! A part of the Queen liked having people saying nice things to her, but the other part of her, of course, realised that Melchit was just silly old Melchit and was not sexy like Blackadder, didn't make her scream when, when he walked into a room. <laughs> She never, never delivered a single line the way we expected her to deliver them, never once, and they were always better, you know, this insane character that she produced, obviously flattered the script enormously, I mean the script was quite funny, but without her insane Queenie, um, you know, it, it's obviously it couldn't possibly have, have been anything like as good. It's for taking the mickey out of my beloved Edmund so cruelly. I'm gonna knock your block off. <laughs> Queenie's an absolute immature, and she's always had her way. And she's greedy and rapacious and threatening and everything. Dame Flora Robson, Betty Davis, Glenda Jackson, Helen Mirren, Kate, Kate Blanchett, Judy Dench have all played 
Queen Elizabeth I. None of them played her as well as Miranda Richardson. Oh, please! I so want to live! (laughs) (laughs) There is that, you know, that element of, you know, comeuppance where you delight in the person being brought down to earth. the Lord for the gift of <laughs> laughter. When he realises that he's been had, is somewhere between I want to kiss you and I want to kill you, and it's just a beautiful moment. The Prince Regent thinks that the Duke of Wellington's after him, and he has this plan where he's going to swap places with Blackadder, he's going to become the butler, and Blackadder will become the Prince Regent. There's no alternative, sir. We must swap clothes. Oh. Fantastic, yes, dressing up, I love it. <laughs> it's like that story, uh, The Prince and the Paupers. And the Pauper. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. The Prince and the Paupers and the Pauper. Yeah. <laughs> he was just gorgeously uh, stupid. Why, my own father wouldn't recognise me. Your own father never can, he's mad. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I loved Your Highness, Your Highness, because it shows in a very neat way, class distinction. Unfortunately, sir, you do realise that I shall have to treat you like a servant. Oh, I think I can cope with that. Thank you, Blackadder. And you'll have to get used to calling me Your Highness, Your Highness. Your Highness, Your Highness. (laughs) No, just Your Highness, Your Highness. That's what I said. Your Highness, Your Highness, Your Highness, Your Highness. (laughs) Yes, let's just leave that for now, shall we? Complicated stuff, obviously. When Hugh plays stupid, there is nothing behind the eyes. So, you know, I, we took, I think we took Percy, who hadn't been clever, and, and scooped out the final teaspoonful of brains and, and presented um, Hugh Laurie. He can do this extraordinary thing in which his eyes just take on a slight film of stupidity, and you know that no phrase you can utter, no truth you can express, how, no matter how simply done, can penetrate that film. It's just closed. But what? Who? Where? How? <laughs> don't even try to work it out, Baldrick. Two people you know well have exchanged coats and now you don't know which is which. <laughs> well, sir, I'm pretty confused myself. It still makes me giggle now thinking about it because it was just clever. <laughs> See the little goblin, see his little feet, and his little nosy woes, isn't the goblin sweet? Yes! Edmund starts singing the song about a little goblin. They get distracted. On any other day, Edmund would have been scheming. He'd have been doing something. Because he's, you know, had a drink, all he wants to do is sing about the goblin. See the little goblin. Wait a minute. I'm sure there was something very important I had to do to all of you this morning. Something about 10,000 florins, was it? I think it was something about an inheritance. Look, do you not want to hear about this goblin or not? Yes! Yes! Right, well, perhaps this time I might be allowed to continue and perhaps finish with any luck. Blackadder, drunk, singing an appalling little song. And who should appear from under Miranda's skirts than... Miriam Margulies, with a hat, sort of like that. Luck! <laughs> well, hey, get it? No, no, no. Oh, come on! And there is a play on words at the end, which you may not be able to show before the watershed. And Miriam Margulies is back as the Queen herself in the Blackadder Christmas Carol. Queen Victoria, that is. What are you doing, Albert? Nothing. Oh, yes you are, you naughty German sausage. (laughs) That's always an absolute treat to to work with her on and off camera. I mean, she's a complete delight. Tell me what you're doing. I just said I'm not doing anything. (laughs) Really, woman, when you're busy ruling India, you don't tell me what you are doing. Jim Broadbent's doing a very, very good German accent. So why should I tell you what I am doing when I am busy wrapping up this cushion for your surprise Christmas present? (laughs) Damn! But he is a brilliant comic artist, and that has gone on. He's, you know, he's one of our our ornaments to our profession. 
I love surprises. Christmas without surprises is like the nuts without a nut crack. Which is why I have bought you this surprise nut crack of damn, damn. He's sort of sort of stupid but he's doing it because he adores her and he's so excited about the idea of surprising her and it's it's just adorable that is nicht ausgezeichnet <laughs> for it is for precisely such an outing as this that i have bought you my final surprise present this muff which i'm going to give you tomorrow <laughs> i had no memory of filming it or having seen it and it came as a complete surprise and it, and it did strike me and I, i'm not don't laugh very readily at uh, <laughs> my own performances, but it did actually make me laugh. You know what would cheer you 